Well, I guess that was kind of an unboxing. <laughs> Morning, by the way. Today, we're gonna be slamming the piss out of this Corolla. Now, there's one thing about this car that really bothers me. It came on 16 inch rims. Now, these are really cool, super Advan three piece wheels, but 16s are just too big for a little car like this. Now, will I get rid of them? If probably eventually, you know. Um, I have a couple of Corolla friends that just constantly make fun of me, tell me, oh, when you're gonna get smaller wheels, when you get smaller wheels, I'm like, bro, I'm like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, guys. So, I know these wheels are actually uh, kind of rare. I don't really know. The, the sizes aren't too, uh, aren't too wanted, but they're 16. I think the front 16 by seven. I think the back is 16 by eight. And uh, we're just about tucking tire. This car is already on lowering springs, but uh, I'm gonna try to drop this thing down like two, three more inches, just to get her sitting looking a little bit better. Now, let's go over what we got here. These right here are coilovers. Now, they're not just any coilovers. This brand called NX coilovers. So they're called the NX FRPs. They're called Fast Road Pros. Now, um, there's a few different types of uh, variations you can get of these coilovers. You can get, you know, different springs. You can buy the better version. It has like different oil in it or whatever. I'm, I'm not really a, a coilover guru for these uh, cars, but this is actually coilovers for an AE86. So um, it's probably not gonna 100% fit properly. I know for a fact that uh, we might have to redrill the shock tower or we could just buy new top hats. We'll figure that out. Probably just drill it because it's easier. And um, here's a, a switch of pace here. These are called true coilovers. Now, if you know, um, usually on cars like this and like E36s and stuff like that, the shocks are two pieces. The spring sits in a bucket and the shock just kind of holds everything together. Now, this is a true coilover. I do not know how it's gonna work on this car. I don't know if it's gonna fit properly. We're gonna find out. But yeah, so I hear that NX is actually one of the, the best kinds of coilovers you can buy for a AE86 or a, a Corolla chassis. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna try to get these on. Now the, the bummer about you know coilovers like this, the spindle is part of the coilover, so it's kind of a pain in the ass, which means it's gonna take a little bit longer to put together because we have to take everything apart on the car, but we're gonna work on that and uh, we're gonna try to get these on. And we're just probably gonna try to slam the piss out of this car now. I think everything's gonna pretty much rub. Yeah, everything's gonna rub. There's only like two inches until we're smacking this fender liner, but it's okay. We're gonna drop her down and we're gonna we're gonna figure it out. Um, yeah, because this car, it's almost just about roadworthy. Just needs a few things. Still gotta get the uh, rear window put in. Got some tape on there because it's been raining. I know for a fact the fronts are gonna work once you redrill the hole. I don't know about the rears, so I don't really care. We'll just start with the front. We're gonna put the front up on uh, jack stands. We're gonna pull the wheels off and then we'll go from there. So what I had done was I had taken off the wheel. I had pretty much loosened a couple bolts. Uh, just to make it easier for demonstration. Now I'm going to go over everything real quick. So I took the lug nuts off. That was a, what is this, 21 millimeter. Four lug nuts, we took that off. Now what we started doing is we just started loosening everything because you don't want to start taking everything apart and then realizing something's stuck or something's broken. So I just put a wrench on everything, cracked everything loose, and uh, everything's good. So we're going to start pulling everything off one by one. Now this caliper. Mine is a 16. God, these freaking huge, they're huge. Oh, look at that. Spider nest. Pads are good, it's good to know. That's done. Okay, now there are your bolts for your, your knuckle right here. These are 17s. Went ahead and popped these off, boop. What you saw me doing earlier is I was taking a flathead, tapping it in between here, and I was prying the dust cover away. As you see, it's already pried away, but it's kind of going like this, kind of doing a little bit of this, but make sure you kind of spin it around and do it even. And then by the time you're done, it just pops right off. Bunch of grease in there. As you see, there's a cotter pin. There's uh, this little thing that goes under the cotter pin and then there's a nut. 
So we're gonna go ahead and take this cotter pin off. We're gonna try to take it off nice. That way we could reuse it because we're cheap. There we go. Probably should have a towel so we don't get grease everywhere. Okay, this little thing comes off too. This just hooks around the nut. Would you look at that? The nut's hand tight. This should have a tiny torque to it. Like less than 15 pounds, um, depending on you know how, how everyone's supposed to do it. This is really not supposed to be loose. So um, it's supposed to be a little bit tighter than hand tight, basically. Now your what's it called is just gonna slide right off. I believe this is a bearing. Keep that with your what's it called. Since I have those big, huge, chunky boy rotors, um, I have an adapter, I think, for the calipers. So um, you have to take this off because you're gonna need this on your next set. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Hopefully it is something easy. It looks like it is a 17. So we're gonna pop these off. Let's come up here with your 14 millimeter, take those three off. We got some of our High temp wheel bearing grease. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and repack uh, those, all of those freaking bearings and stuff like that. Wipe them all down if there's any dirt on them. Stuff looks kind of nasty. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe that off. So we got some paper towels. But another thing I wanted to mention, since these coilovers are for an AE86, I went ahead and unbolted the top hat. Basically, it's just four bolts because this is basically a camber plate. So I went ahead and did that. Made like a super janky template. Laid it over and I had to re-drill one hole, which is not bad. So if you put this back in, you notice that, first of all, it doesn't sit very center. In the T72, they are directly center. Now that might throw off your caster a little bit. I'm not really sure. Don't really care, but it, everything fits good. We got a little bit of wiggle room. So yeah, one hole, re-drilled. Not a big deal, I guess. Not, not the end of the world, so. Um, that's done. We're gonna go ahead and bolt this top hat back to this coilover. Went ahead and cleaned everything up down here to the best of my ability. Oh, in the last video I mentioned that the freaking tension rods uh, brackets didn't have bolts in them, so I went ahead and got those in. Now everything's feeling really tight. It's a good time to check all of your nuts and grease all of your fittings. Because if you see this, the what's it called, the bushing is completely gone. And if you look in there, there's nothing in there, it's dry. And this thing, that uh, basically that lower ball joint is basically trash. So we're gonna order a new one of these. Actually, we're gonna order a whole new control arm. But for now, these will work. The ball joint actually moves really, really good. It's still tight. That's what you want, nice and tight. Now, when I was doing that, I did realize that this is loose, as you can see right here. So if you move this around, as you can see, the freaking the whole thing is uh whole thing's loose so i'm gonna pull that back out tighten that now we're gonna throw the coilover back in these are actually called roll center adjusters so these will go sandwiched in between your knuckle and your coilover they give you new bolts so if you don't have an allen for that you should probably get one i'm gonna look at it right now i believe it is an eight or a 10 mil so basically a big allen wrench so we're gonna go get a socket for that real quick make sure we have it Yep, so it is a 10 mil. See, H10, just fits in like a glove. So we know we got that, we don't have to run to the store. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back in, get all of the nuts and bolts on and just kind of snugged up. And then we're gonna go ahead and work on the wheel bearing, which is the most important part in my opinion. Um, we're also gonna go over torque specs um, because every video I watched, no one went over torque specs and I'm kind of a torque spec guy. Tight is tight, I know that. But um, I did look at a write-up online and he did give torque specs. I don't know if they're right or not, but we're gonna figure that out.
All right, I ain't no expert, but basically I see these bearings right here, these roller bearings, and we're gonna go ahead and wipe some of this off just to get all the, the nasty gritty stuff off. So they don't look damaged, they look like they're in pretty good shape. All I'm gonna do is uh, just pack them up a little bit full of some grease. I just wanna make sure that there's nothing, there's no dirt in there. Cause there's a lot of grease in here. So it's someone, someone greased it, but I'm gonna put new grease in there. There's a lot of grease in there. The race looks pretty good. I, I already checked out the one on the rear too. Now this is either you kind of just grease it or you pull it apart and you replace everything. Um, but everything looks pretty good, which I, I'm actually quite surprised. So we're just going to take this bearing and there's actually, there's like a way to pack it, but I, I am no expert. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep trying to push it in to the actual bearing itself, roll it around every now and then. Oh, I need those. Ah, there they go. So I seen two before this was in here. There's a lot of grease in there. That's where the spindle goes. So we'll go ahead and slap a bunch in here. Now, if I'm doing this wrong, someone can correct me in the comments. I slide this on. See, I greased up my shaft. There we go. Everyone has their own way of doing this. I just read one way online and I'm cool with that. So what I read was you tighten this nut to 21 foot pounds, right? You spin everything to get the grease moving around, loosen it again, and then you tighten it again to 15 to 19 foot pounds. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, whether that's right or not, don't really care. Um, but I think I don't want it freaking hand tied. I want it a little bit more than hand tied, which is about 10, 15 pounds. So we're gonna start with 20 foot pounds. There we go. So it says spin it around. Okay, now we're gonna loosen it. There we go, 15. Tighten it, it feels real good. Actually, what is that? Oh, that's the freaking tie rod I never tightened. That's what happens, guys, you know, tighten your tie rods. Thought that was the bearing. No, the bearing's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm just gonna go over a few torque specs now. Don't freaking hold me to this, okay? I had a very hard time finding the factory service manual online and I couldn't find all the torque specs, but what I did find is a guy who did a write-up on how to change an OEM strut. Same shit, so basically what it is, is these top three bolts, they're gonna be 14 foot pounds. What else? So um, I already told you the, the whole hub thing that works good. Now I got an aftermarket wheel with caliper, but the stock one for the A86, I'm not sure about the TE72. Um, so basically the plate to the coilover is 47 foot pounds. And then uh, the caliper to the, to the plate is 15 foot pounds. So I went ahead and I just tightened this wheel with caliper to 47 foot pounds. And then um, the dust cover, basically what I, um, what I mounted my adapter bracket to, it says that's 20 to 25. Uh, I went 40 on that because that actually um, is an adapter for my cal caliper. So I went 40 on that, I didn't want to strip it, so I decided to go 40. The steering knuckle on the bottom, those two bolts that go to our RCA, this right here, I went ahead and tightened that to 58 foot pounds. I rounded that up to 60 and then I just did a tiny bit extra. Um, and then that was pretty, pretty much it for everything. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of cleaning. I'm gonna clean the rotor with brake cleaner um, because yeah, so we're feeling pretty solid on this. So happy about that, a little bit of rust. I don't really drive this thing. So we're gonna clean that up. Uh, we're gonna clean up this little uh, dust shield, make that look all nice clean this up a little bit and we're gonna put the wheel back on. Well, didn't really lower it as much as I had wanted to. This thing is, ma I just put it on maxed out. Had a feeling this was gonna happen. Maybe the A86 just sits different. I'm not really sure. 
hopefully the back's gonna be a thousand times easier. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jack the back up by the pumpkin and then we're gonna put the rear on jack stands and then we're gonna use the jack to lift the pumpkin while we pop these top bolts loose for the struts. You can see them right there. Pop those babies loose and then what we'll do is we'll lower the jack and hopefully drop everything down at one time. Another tangent, because it's like a while you're there thing. So when I bought the car, there was a box with these in there and I was like, huh, what are these like Heim joint bars for? And I remember previous owner telling me that he uh, he did the T3 four link kit. And I was like, oh, maybe these are just spare links, you know? Um, actually they're not, it's because I never really looked, but as you can see, he put on the bottom link and he didn't put on the top link. So the top link is still factory. Now I was like, why did he do that? I'm not really sure. So I was looking around and I was like, huh, oh, maybe he uh, maybe bought the wrong one or whatever. I measured it. The stock link up here is nine and a half inches. And I measured this at full, uh, what is it? Full extended and fully compressed. And fully compressed, I think it was like eight, fully extended, I think it was like 10 dangerously like 10 and a quarter so I put it exactly to the length of the other bar and this is gonna work perfect so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull those top two uh, link bars out and we're gonna compare them and maybe throw those in real quick before we do the uh, the whole suspension thing man we ran out of sunlight so we ended up getting these links on honestly kind of a pain in the ass but whatever so bottom everything's drooped had to unbolt the exhaust because it was hitting the exhaust on full droop. So um, hopefully that's not a problem with the coilovers. <laughs> Gotta get these bad boys off. Stick it right here. Get that puppy off. She's gonna fall. Bing. Old school metal boys. Woo, fuck. A little bit of blood, of course. But she's out, man. Look at all of those freaking spider, uh, whatever they're called, nests or web or little whatever. I don't know. Get that out. And uh, we're going to work on taking this out. Hopefully I don't have to damage it. Oh, that motherfucker's on there. Okay, we're going to figure out how to take those out. Then we're going to hang the new coilovers. Hopefully, should be a breeze. I keep saying that, but hope it's true. Well, just about done here. That was actually really simple. The links took freaking over an hour, but this shit took about 10, 12 minutes. So basically all you do is for these true coilovers, I just started with the single nut up here. I just kind of hung it and then I jacked up the rear end to where it needed to be. Then I slapped it on, smacked it with a hammer a couple times. And uh, shit, that was it. We're just... <laughs> Just about done. I have everything all the way maxed out slammed. So now hopefully the car should sit even. Um, you know, to be honest, it really doesn't look that low. I'm going to get the car pretty much back on the ground and then we'll, uh, we'll see what happens when the, when the jack goes all the way down. Hopefully we can get it out. Also quick note, um, about this bump stop right there. Um, I just cut two thirds of it off because it's pretty cool. There's like little dividers. There's basically three portions of the bump stop. I just cut two off. We left that last part there. I don't even know how to get it off. So um, it looks like we got a bunch of travel anyways. I don't even think we're gonna get that much travel. So that's pretty much it. All the bolts are tightened. Um, I don't really know what the directions say, but as for this bolt right here, I'm gonna get it on the ground first, and then we're gonna tighten it. And if there's a, a torque to spec, then we'll torque it to, to whatever spec. So we'll get that done. So we got the car up front, we drove it. Rubs like a motherfucker, but it's all good. It looks pretty damn good. We probably got on, I don't know, maybe another half inch or an inch as opposed to uh, the previous test. Let me show you real quick. Now we're tucking hard in the front and back. It rubs like a motherfucker, that's how I know it's lower. Car drives like a freaking dream. 
we ended up getting the back window gasket in we got this thing shined up real nice we got all the chrome trim kind of shined up we took all the black paint off of there mirrors shined up working on shining up the wheels we'll get there it's actually touching the fender liner right now so we got to work on that i want to get some different wheels kind of so anyways that's just about it for these uh coilovers should be looking pretty good for anyone doing this to their car i hope it helped you um check your front wheel bearings after you drive your car i don't know 50 miles i'm i'm about to check mine and i want to thank you guys for watching i'm Garza, slide modified i'm out peace